What's up, guys? We are live with Jay Norvell, the third time we have been fortunate to have him in studio. Jay, thank you so much for doing this. How's it going? Oh, it's been going great. I mean, it's football season. That's right. Yeah, we got a week of our uh, uh, training camp in and just really good to get the work in with the new players. Obviously, yesterday, first scrimmage of fall. I know you guys went a little basic, as you, as you mentioned. Really just wanted to see some guys get physical, get some blocking yep. in. Now that you've had uh, some time to go back and, and review it, how do you feel like it went? I thought it was great. You know, um, we've got a lot of new linemen. We've got new running backs. So we get, we get a lot of our passing in a normal practice. Just really wanted to see our guys run the ball, be physical, see if our offensive linemen can block combinations, see if our backs can read it and run physical. And uh, we got a lot of great work, a lot of situational work, short yardage, goal line, two-minute a lot of good things done yesterday. You know, goal line, red zone in general has been an issue for CSU a couple of years now. Yep. Do you feel like you guys are better suited for those situations this season? I, I think, uh, you know, you really can't hide the weaknesses of your line yeah. the closer you get to the goal line. And I think the improvement of our offensive line, I, you know, uh, Savion Henderson, Oliver Jervis, Jacob Gardner, Tavis Tuyote moving him back to offense. He's just a big physical guy inside at guard. And then Drew Moss, tough, hard-nosed player. Uh, I, I love those guys. We added a guy like Andrew Cannon, a guy like Bobby Lawrence. I know I think we have seven or eight guys that can play. And um, we're a whole inch taller at every position. I mean, I mean it's amazing. We did, a, we did this synopsis of our whole roster at every position we compared to when we took the job. And we're an inch taller at every position. Um, and I think we're more improved at every position. So that should be reflected in our season. I know it's it's been kind of a unique situation for you guys trying to build this roster these last couple of years. Really, that's one of the things you said from day one is we got to get bigger. We got to get faster. Yep. Do you feel like this roster is it maybe not perfect, but getting to where you need it to be to play the style you want to play? I think we're getting closer. You know, the big thing is to have talent experience and chemistry and we we got to have depth and competition at every position um i think it's just so evident in our offensive line last year you know our second offensive line mm -hmm. it was really porous when we tried to play those kids but we're more solidified we can execute when we use those reps in practice it looks like what it's supposed to look like and so i think uh i think we do have more depth in our in our whole roster I think uh, we're more talented. I think we look different. When you just look at us yeah. practice, we're all bigger, we're all longer. Last year, several of our offensive linemen, when I shook their hand, I'd look down on them. <laughs> now when I, I shake our guy's hand, I'm looking up at him, and that's the way it should be. In the receiver room, I mean, that was probably the, especially by like November, for, for those that don't maybe understand, how much did that actually limit what you guys could do as an offense? Because you had like three scholarship receivers yeah. at some point. It just, it just totally limited the way we could practice. You know, we, we finished the conference season with 55 scholarship players. You know, we were allowed at 85. So, you know, we went out and brought in 49 new guys yeah. this year, got our scholarship count back up to a full roster. And it just, it's completely different how we can practice, you know, higher tempo guys are going hard you can hold the players accountable for practicing full speed if if they don't you just put the next guy in last year we didn't have a next guy yeah. to put in so it's totally changed the way we can work well you mentioned after day one that one thing you would like to see is, is for them to practice a little quicker i mean yep. that makes sense it's day yep. one have you have you guys gotten there yeah you know our tempo and practice has moved on We've gotten faster every single day, and in the scrimmage, I thought we were really fast. We want to continue that. And that, you know, we don't really condition after practice. We condition in practice. So we really want our guys to sprint from drill to drill, work full speed on every snap, and get their conditioning with their pads on. You know, we'll, we'll start having, you know, 12, 13, 14, 15 play drives where guys can't sub, and that's where we'll get our conditioning yeah. over the next two weeks. One of the guys I wanted to ask you about, and it, it sounds like he performed well in the scrimmage, is North Dakota State transfer Kobe Johnson. Yep. Actually, a couple of North Dakota State yes. transfers we'll, we'll have to talk about. But, you know, I think you said yesterday he's just so natural at the position. Yep. And, and 
it, I guess I'm just surprised how quickly he's caught on, given how drastically different the offense you guys play right. is versus what they did at North Dakota State. Yeah, he's a he's a good back, and some guys are just natural at their position. It doesn't take very long mm -hmm. to watch him practice and be able to read runs. He's got great patience, and then he can squirt through. And he's not tall, so it's very difficult yeah. for the defense to see him. But he knows how to take hits. He knows how to break tackles. And just a veteran player. You know, we have him and Avery. We brought in K.J. Edwards, a junior college back, who's shown a lot of shiftiness. You know, and then Damian Henderson has just been really impressive in practice. He's a big physical kid. He can hit the hole downhill. And we're going to need all of those guys. And so, you know, that's was a big part of our scrimmage, seeing those kids run the ball. Um, we had a couple young guys put the ball on the ground, uh, but they'll learn from that experience mm -hmm. and they'll be better. Probably a relief after the spring game where yes. <laughs> you have no yeah. scholarship running That's backs. exactly right. That's exactly right. Clay Millen, you know, you've talked a lot about his growth, his maturity, the fact that he was so accurate last year, 72% completion. One of the things that stood out to me, though, that you mentioned in Vegas is that he's more cautious with the football than Carson Strong. And, and, I, and I think you meant that as a compliment. Mm -hmm. But I am curious, just given that it's a, a vertical passing offense, yep. do you want him to maybe open it up a little bit more at times? There's no doubt. We want him to take, take advantage of his opportunities. And, um, you know, I also think that comes from having young guys. Mm -hmm. You know, um, obviously he had great confidence in Torrey and letting it rip to Torrey. But now I think he has great confidence in Dal Hoker mm -hmm. at tight end. I think... You know, Justice Ross Simmons playing a year with him. He has confidence in him. Lewis Brown and Dylan Goffney. So we've got four guys that can play. They've all played college football. Uh, they're more experienced. And I think Clay will be more confident opening it up and giving those guys opportunities one-on-one. -on -one. I think that makes sense just naturally. Like, one, he was getting hit in the teeth quite a bit last year. Yep. And he really had one guy that he trusted. Yep. So it's like if, if Tory's not there, I'm just going to get rid of it. Yeah, and I, I really think Dallin Hoker is going to open up a lot of things for Clay and Tory. You know, we just didn't have a tight end that could stretch the middle of the field and really make the defense pay. So they're shadowing you all day. There's no doubt. Well, they could really roll over to Tory, and they, 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 they pretty much disregarded our tight end last year. And so... We got a quality player in, in Dallin that can run routes and get open and stretch the field. And I think I think Clay just feels so much more confident having him in there. I, he's, I mean, you said in, on signing day, it's, it's kind of hard to recruit Power 5 guys. He's kind of a, a special situation, though. I guess you guys kind of lucked out with his, with his wife. Yeah. Well, his wife, Tay, is such a great athlete. She's been a great addition to our track team. Yeah, it's they cool won. how they came over together. There's no doubt. And, and uh you know, and I, I give Coach Mummy a lot of credit. You know, um, a lot of UCLA and a lot of this Baylor were recruiting mm -hmm. Dallin, and they really didn't recruit his wife. And we recruited his wife, and, and we kind of got the edge on those other schools because this is a great place for the both of them. That's cool. <laughs> Very cool. How do you feel about the, the recruiting right now? I mean, obviously the class is coming together. I know you yeah. can't comment on specific individuals, but... You know, how close are you to filling the class out? You know, when we when we decided we wanted to come to CSU, one of the reasons was we felt like this was a great place to recruit to. And um, it hasn't disappointed us. You know, the campus, the town, the facilities, um, the proximity to Denver, those are all big positives for us. You know, the kids come and they love being in the foothills of the Rocky Mountains. And so, you know, we had a great class year ago with 30 guys. This last year's class, 49 guys, I think we got a lot of ton of talented players that fit our profile. And we've had a great summer. I think we've got close to 18 commitments somewhere around there. Yeah. And and um, we've had a really productive summer. So we're on our way. The key is to get quality, you know, talented players, uh, give them experience, and then give great chemistry. You know, and we believe in building through – high school players. Yeah, and development. We believe in high school players. When we recruit a kid for a year, we know everything about them. The size, the the weight, the length, all the position qualities we look for, but also we know their character mm -hmm. and their injury history, and we can make sure that they're exactly what we're looking for. You know, when you try to get a kid in the portal, 
you just have a short window to find out about them. And a lot of mistakes are made on portal kids. Yeah. Um, it's just not the way to build a team. It's kind of like pro football. You're not going to build a team through free agency. No. You're going to build a team through the draft. And so we want to build a team that's going to be good for the long haul. And that's getting the kind of players that we really want through the high school ranks. Does it, I mean, I know you guys had a strong, really strong group of high school kids that came in with this past class. But because you had to sign so many players just to fill holes on the roster, does it feel like, you know, with this upcoming cycle, 2024, it feels like, all right, this is a little more normal. We're no building question. for the future, not just trying to plug in and replace no all these holes. No, we're, we're signing high school players that will grow and mature in our program. And this is going to be a more of a normal class. Yeah. It's going to be about 24, 25 guys. And, um, you know, last year was very unusual. Having to go get 49 guys just doesn't ha – it's never happened in my career and by far the biggest class we've ever had to sign. Was it hard to, I don't know, maybe feel like you were getting a full evaluation in just because you had so many guys you were going after? That's twice as many people as yeah. you'll sign this year. I think it was a, a lot for our staff to chew, but – we were very specific and we did not change our values yeah. for this class. You know, if a kid didn't fit the, the, the qualities that we were looking for at that position, we weren't going to go on them. And I just give our staff a lot of credit for identifying these players. And, you know, and we've had, we've hit, we've hit on our transfer kids on the most part. Um, we, you know, the kids that we've brought in to fill holes that are transfer players. We have a real criteria. One of them is playing experience. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of these schools that are signing transfer players and they've never played at the school. They've been school. on the bench for three That's years. That's right. Yeah. And you don't you don't know if they're good players or not. And so, you know, you know, the looking at a kid's playing history, if he's been a starter for a couple of years, it's proven that he's dependable, that he's durable, that he can be trusted and counted on. Those are the kind of kids that we've gone after in the portal. Well, and I think with some of these FCS guys, I mean, specifically the North Dakota State trio, all of which are, are probably in, in competition to start, Yep. those guys, they, they have a chip on their shoulder There's too, no despite doubt. the fact that they're proven. No doubt. And, you know, that's a quality program. They've won national mm -hmm. championships. Those kids know how to practice. They know how to compete. They know how to get ready for big games. You know, I think all three of those guys are really tremendous players. You know, Kobe Johnson, Dom Jones at corner – you know, he's actually wearing Chiggy's old number, so he it's hard to tell them apart. <laughs> They're big, long corners. He can run and cover. He's a really quality player. And Tony Pierce at defensive end is a physical guy that can pack a punch. So we have three quality college football players, and those guys, they're really going to help our team. I think it's clear the depth that you have, the defensive line especially, one of the, the big strengths of this team. The secondary you've got to feel pretty good at, especially mm -hmm. if you hit on a couple of these transfers. How do you feel about the linebackers right now? And do you, do you have ideal depth there? You know, Trey Pasture and, and Chase Wilson, I think they're more athletic than what we've played with in the past. I, I really see a lot of great play out of them. Uh, and I think that position has improved athletically. Um, you know, I, one of the things, we went through every position in, in, in uh, preseason camp with our staff and evaluated. I think we're better at linebacker. I think we're better at every position. We've improved our athletic ability. We're longer as athletes, um, and and we can run. And and I think, um, you know, our linebacker position is in solid hands with those kids. Uh, Kulik will not be back, right? Correct. Yeah, he's going to take a medical. He had some injuries in the spring that, you know, he's not going to be able to continue his career. That's a bummer, but I mean, that's cool that Chase Wilson, especially given how strong he played in yep. the season finale. You know, and another hard-nosed in-state kid that just loves to play and loves CSU. I, I got to ask about it. I, I do, it's all the rage, and honestly, I'm <laughs> sick of it. This realignment, this, yep. that, it's not in our hands. Right. I, you, you and I, we both appreci appreciate tradition, yep. and a lot of this is kind of spitting all over that. Yeah. So I guess... Just what's been your gut reaction to everything that's happened these last couple it's, of weeks? It's certainly different, and, and uh, you know, it's not the way it always has been. You know, I love the traditions, and I love the regional games and the fan bases getting excited about the rivalries, and I hope we don't lose that. Um, but as far as we're concerned, I think we're in a great spot at CSU. We have a great campus. We have a great community. Mm -hmm. We have great facilities. We have great support. 
And so, you know, and, and, and I was really excited at media days. You know, the first guy I met there was a representative of the Cotton Bowl, and the next guy I met was a representative of the Fiesta Bowl. And I played in both, uh, coached in both of those games. You know, the winner of our conference has a great chance to play on New Year's Day yeah. and play in the Fiesta Bowl. Um, next year, they're going to open the college football playoff up to 12 teams. And if we continue to improve as a program and we could play at championship level, we could be one of those teams. And so I think whatever happens with expansion, I think we're in a great place at CSU. And I just want to keep continue to pour into this team and build this team into a championship level. Again, not a decision you would make, but would you be in favor if if the opportunity arose for the Mountain West to potentially expand and maybe look at adding some of these pack teams or, or I, other leagues even? I think if any any opportunity for us to play better competition and add quality teams to our league and our environment, I think that's great for CSU and great for our fans. And it feels like, I mean, style of play, like it just feels like they would fit right in yeah. there. Yeah, and we we recruit, you know, the same players, Washington State, Oregon State, Cal, Stanford. I mean, we're all recruiting the same, similar players and so I think they would be we would we would be very comparable to those schools. You know, you mentioned the the opportunities at CSU. Is there any worry that with the landscape that's changing that there might be less opportunities available or like what do you guys need to do to make sure that those stay open or stay yeah, available to you? I have every confidence in in you know our athletic administration and our president that we're exploring all the options, but I do think this. I think we're in a great position. I think, you know, we're a school that that other conferences and our conference is really happy with. I mean, we yeah. have a lot to offer. You know, with the Denver TV market and with with our facilities, fa fabulous facilities and our support. Um, you know, I think we have a lot to offer uh, our league or any league that that would be interested in us. I'm not asking you to make any bold predictions, but you mentioned the New Year's Six Bulls. And last time I had you on, you talked about Tulane being a program you'd like to emulate. You know, I think they were a two win team and then they were a double digit win team. Yeah. Now, obviously, that's pretty drastic to go from mm -hmm. two to ten. But do you feel like you're kind of in that mix this year to be able to make that leap? Yeah, I actually showed I actually showed the highlights of the Tulane USC game last year to our team to start camp off. And, you know, we played Tulane. Two years ago when I yeah. was at Nevada, we played them in a bowl game and we beat them. And to see their progress as a program, I think Willie Fritz is a great coach. Um, but very similar style to us as far as, you know, recruiting kids, building the program. And I think that's an opportunity that we have. Um, I just look at our schedule as a great opportunity. We play two Pac-12 teams that we match up very well against. Um, we play one of them at home. And one of them's an in-state rival. We got to buy before we play Colorado, and I think that's awesome, especially for a team that's young, that's gelling together like ours. I think that extra week helps us. Um, so I think we're we're right where we we need to be. I think it's a great opportunity for us, and uh, it's more about us focusing on what we need to do to be a winning team week in yeah. and week out. As far as last year goes, I mean, how much of that? can you evaluate given just that the roster was in such a weird spot? Yeah. I think it's like, uh, you know, I like to use the analogy. It's kind of like working on an engine. You, you don't know what you got until you open the hood. And so, you know, we know what the issues are. Um, you know, I think we, we have kids that want to play at Colorado State. They want to play for this coaching staff. They were recruited to play here. And, um, and we have a full roster now. We can practice. I just think it's going to elevate everybody's performance. And, and let's face it, we're realists. We won three games last year. Everybody has to elevate and get better. You know, if we mm -hmm. can, if, if the play of the players that played in consistently last year, if they could play solid winning football, and then our guys that played at the all-conference level, if they could play at an NFL draft level, if we can improve our entire roster, we're going to see improvement in our record. I think that's exciting. I think that that's what the fans want to hear. No doubt. You know, I, I know you've got another interview coming up, so I don't want to take up too much of your time, but I did want to ask you, you guys got new uniforms this year. They're a little more traditional. Yeah. That kind of has like a, 
old school college football feel? Yeah. Was was that something that you played a role in? No, I really didn't have much to do with the jerseys. I think they're a great pick, though, and I think they represent us well. You know, we're we're a blue collar outfit. You know, we're an ag school. It's the history of CSU that you know we got guys that are hard nosed that are no nonsense and yeah. just go to work and let their let their pads do the talking. And uh, so I think it's a it's a great look for us, and, and our kids are excited about them. Well, as as much as this white helmet is gorgeous, <laughs> I, again, I'm old school with college yep. football. I'm kind of excited to just go back to like green and gold on yep. the road, and and your colors, and and representing something bigger than yourself. There's a there's I'm a traditionalist, and you know I I love our traditional helmet with the green and gold. Um, I love our traditional jerseys, and um, I I. I told our equipment people, I said, you know, once we start winning, I'm not going to want to change jerseys. So, <laughs> you know, I just think it's important when, when, when the other team looks down and they see you in your helmet and your traditional jersey, they know what they're in for. And that's what I want us to be known for. I get that you have to have an element of the alternates and the swag and all that for recruiting. But do you feel like it's gotten a little carried away? I think it can be, yeah. You know, I, I just look at the New York Yankees and – I mean, everybody knows the pinstripes. They're, they're playing in the pinstripes. And, you know, I coached with the Raiders. I know we're in, in, in Colorado, but, you know, everybody knew who the silver and black was. Yeah. I, mean, it, I mean, so you have certain things that your team gets identified for. And, uh, and I love our traditional Ram helmet and our green and gold uniforms. So you're going to see us in that most of the time. I mean, it, I always just, whenever people argue with me, I'm like, you don't see Alabama changing it that's up. That's right. You know, if you, it's not broke, you don't that, have to that, fix that's it. That's exactly right. All right. Just a couple more before I let you go. Uh, Torrey Horton, I think at this point, if you don't know how talented he is, you're not paying attention. But you mentioned he's an NFL receiver. You want him to take it to the next level. Yep. What does that mean, though? Like, what does he need to do to be even better than he was before? I think just finishing more plays. I think his ability as a punt returner, makes him an even bigger threat. It adds more to his game. But I, I also think that us having other threats are going to give him more one-on-one -on -one opportunities and give him allow him to make even more big plays yeah. this year, plus a more experienced Clay Millen, plus a more experienced offensive line is going to help him have more opportunities. So, you know, the bar just gets raised for everybody. And, uh, you know, and I challenged Tori. I said, you know, your goal now is to be a dominant player, you know, to be a player that everybody fears every time we play and, uh, and to bring that production every week. You mentioned Clay is, is more confident. Just speaking with Tori, it kind of seems like he's maybe come out of his shell a little bit too. Yeah. I, you know, maybe I get, you know, last year was such a weird spot, new school, everything, but it seems like he's really just kind of thriving. I think all those kids that transferred are, are more comfortable now. This is their school. Yeah. You know, CSU is their school. That's where they play. That's where they want to represent. Um, and I think they're just comfortable. You know, Clay's more comfortable. Jacob Gardner's more comfortable. And those guys are really good players, all three of them. And, and uh, Avery Morrill, they're all good players. I think they're all excited. And I think they want to represent this university the way it want, you know, that people can be proud of. And so... We're, we've worked really hard in the off season, you know. And Tori's moved into our leadership role now. Yeah. Clay's moved into our leadership role. Jacob's in a leadership role. Jack Howell's in a leadership role now. And so I think their roles are different, and I think they're starting to expand that and affect more players on the team. I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you about Hanada, just because it's such a unique yeah. situation. I mean, a sumo champion. Yeah. But it, it sounds like he's really like hit the ground running and kind of adjusting well. He's an amazing kid, you know, and, and uh, um, you know, we had a team meeting the other day and he's one of the guys that stood up and talked. And, you know, we have guys that have been on the team for multiple years that never talk and he's a newcomer. He's only been that. here a week. Yeah. And, uh, but just a great kid. He's so appreciative of his opportunity. He loves CSU. He wants to make a difference here. And uh, his teammates love him. You know, not only do we have Anata, but, our kicker, Jordan Noyes, is from, from Great Britain. You know, a 28-year-old kicker with three kids from Great Britain. You know, obviously, Patty's from Australia. So we got an international flair on our it's team. It's CSU Global. That's exactly right. Uh, Noyes, I guess that's a good one just before yeah. we get out of here. You mentioned 
he, he performed pretty well in the scrimmage. Really and well. Kicking has, has kind of been an up and down for the Rams the last yep. couple of years. You feel like you're finally in a solid spot there? Oh, it's it's so important to have a consistent kicker that you know you can rely on. Yeah. And uh, he's just so mature. You know, he's an older kid. He's 28 years old. He's got a family. Uh, he's been fantastic in practice. You know, very consistent. He's got a really live leg. The ball just pops off his foot. And matter of fact, the first few times he he, he hit it, I was surprised because <laughs> I haven't seen the ball come off somebody's foot like that for a while. So really excited to have him. I think he can make a real contribution to our team. When you're a father of three, it probably takes a little pressure <laughs> off. It's he's, a different type of, you're, you know, there's no things doubt. bigger than football. He has more pressure when he goes home than he does <laughs> at practice. Well, Jay, thank you so much for coming in and doing this again. It's thank always you. great to catch up with you. I'll be up throughout the season, but awesome. just having this opportunity means a lot. Appreciate everything you do, too. Thanks.